And we're back. It has been a very long time since I have done a video, but I got some requests from viewers. So let's do another one. I am walking out of work right now and we're gonna pick up where it all started. We're gonna head back to Spokane Create and see what they got going on down there today. So, lots of new stuff to update you on. Uh, it's gonna be a good video. I'll take care of you. You guys might have noticed in that little montage right there that the hood looks a little different. That's because I got a new toy. I've had it for a couple weeks now, slowly working on it. It's horribly dirty right now, but I'm slowly working on cleaning it up, getting it running better. I couldn't be happier. The crazy part is I'm not a big El Camino guy. I never was. I really am, do not like G bodies at all. But for the first day, I was like, ah, oh, what did I get myself into? I feel like I just, I wasn't feeling it. After the first day, it's, I, I wouldn't get rid of this car for anything. I absolutely love it. It's so much more fun to drive than new cars. You actually have to drive it. It doesn't do everything itself. Driving a classic car is just a lot of fun. And being able to haul stuff around not in the trunk of my Cadillac is a lot nicer. So yeah, fun new toy for me. Uh, I'll do a full in-depth kind of introduction to it. But right now, let's go into Spokane Create and see what they got going on. Ah, the sandbox is back. Uh oh, troublemakers. Hey, what are we working on today? So for anybody who's been watching my channel for a while, you can see we kind of reorganized everything in here. This is kind of our 3D printer station now. And we got several of them there, and then our giant Delta right here. So I'll have our nice little soldering and electronic station here. This is relatively new, a uh, Tesla coil, and what we call the floppy organ. Uh, it's basically a MIDI 8-bit or 16-bit, I think it's 8-bit, organ made of old floppy drives that, I believe Alex made this, if you guys remember him from my very first video, I think it was. And then Nate is assembling his stage for his yeah. show. <laughs> this is going to be our new uh, component. Rack, do you want to describe what's going on with it? So we're going to have a bunch of these bins. They're like return address labels that will have a barcode on the front of each bin and a description of what parts are in there. There's actually another row of bins and then one that goes here and one up on the top there. And they're gonna be full of resistors, capacitors, DJTs, MOSFETs, just all sorts of components. Little breadboards, the larger drawers could have uh, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, just equipment that people wanna use. Basically like a mini radio shack. This piece here will go on this pole and a monitor mounts on it. It's a touchscreen monitor and there's a scanner gun, so. What? Yeah. I didn't know we were doing all that. I thought it was just like a, I didn't know it was digital and like functional. I thought it was just storage. Yeah. Wow. So the monitor, it's a touchscreen monitor, 23 inches, and then we have a little Raspberry Pi 3 that runs some software. And so you just take the scanner, you scan the drawer, and then you type in how many you're taking and hit enter. It subtracts it out of the database. And then when we get it low on a part, it'll email me and I'll order more. We're doing it on like the honor system, correct? Yeah, it's just going to be the honor system. People can make donations and then take it. As a nonprofit, the way that we kind of run, Yeah. as long as money comes in, we're going to continue to buy more stuff. So, you know, hopefully people don't take advantage of it. Yeah. The more, as we make profit off of it, that profit will funnel back into 
more more equipment. Too. This will be this will be cool when, when it's done. Not just to have it, I guess, but just the whole idea of it, even that we're able to do that. That we're able, like, if you need a Raspberry Pi, just go grab one real quick and yeah. leave a donation. Hopefully, and yeah, yeah like yeah. that we're able to actually do yeah. that. That's I mean, it's a huge growth, really, even. So. And they'll all be new. Or are we going to use yeah. some of our? Okay. No, we're going to do all new just because um, then you know, you know the integrity of the component when you get it. It's that, easier just to, for filing and keeping track of what we have. It's definitely a little kid hanging upside down. Down. Oh. <laughs> Dan was holding this kid up by his feet, <laughs> just walking around the background. Yeah. So you guys might be wondering why I'm so dressed up, and the answer is I'm not. Uh, this is how I dress every day now. I moved up in my job from general tech, equipment, whatever, to uh, jewelry design. When I got married, I designed my wedding invitations, and they had no idea I knew how to do graphic design, let alone like 12 years experience. And when I showed it to them, I taught them a little bit how to use Photoshop, and a week later they asked me if I would like to do their CAD graphics. So I started doing that, and I basically started going through YouTube University and just uh, finding all the tutorials and stuff I could. So I use a program called Rhino and specifically I use a plugin called GemVision. It's a $5,000 plugin. Just the plugin is five grand. It's ridiculous. I'm going to try and bring you guys into work one day. I gotta, I'm going to talk to the owner and see if he's okay with me filming in there and stuff. I do, I 3D model them, then we print them into a wax, invest them into a mold and then turn it into metal basically. But we were paying like $150 for a ring, for a print of one and I explained to them, let's get a printer, it'll be so much cheaper. So we actually got a Form 2, which if you guys know anything about 3D printing, it's an amazing printer. It prints down to 25 microns, which is, a hair is 60 microns. I'll do a, try and do an update on that and bring you guys in to show you it and do, go let you know exactly what my job is. But uh, I'll go ahead and lay in some things like this and that and this and that. Uh, those are all some of my designs that I've done recently. I firmly believe that in today, in, I mean in 2016, if there's something you wanna know, just go learn it. You don't have to go to university for something. Some things you do. like. For art, there, there's. if you want to learn, just go learn. You don't need a degree to show to your employer. They want a portfolio. They want to see the work. If you're doing something else, like electronic engineering or something, they want to see some, some certificates showing that you know what you're doing. But YouTube University, I mean, we're here right now. Type in anything you want and go learn how to do it. It's really that simple. And go start a career in it. I, I just did it. Should we go see what else is going on around here? So for my... Long time viewers, you guys may remember our Kinetic or Connect uh, sand table. And basically, it uses a Connect to scan the surface and creates a 3D topographical map. We have a projector that projects it. It's slightly changed now. Instead of having the projector mounted way up on a pole, we mounted it low because it wasn't stable and it was wobbly. Then we just shot it into a mirror, and there's the Connect. And it's definitely brighter. It's a lot brighter, which is nice. Uh, somebody threw a gear in here to play around with. You can change it all up. You guys can go back in my old videos and see it, but it's, it's modified now and it's a lot better. So I just came across something interesting here. An 80 gigabyte hard drive. Wait, say that again, Alex? This is 80 megabytes? Eight zero megabytes. Holy crap. Sorry, this is 80 megabytes, not gigabytes. Apparently in its day, when it was new, it cost $22,000. You can actually see the platters in there. That's insane. There's not too much going on around here today, so I honestly, I feel like I don't have much to say. Uh, I just, I haven't done a video in a really long time. and I missed it. Like I'm genuinely excited to be doing another video. Uh, it started, I can't remember his name. Uh, he had a long white beard and he had a cane. He came in here and he recognized me. Just a random guy said uh, he'd spent the weekend watching some of my videos and he said he loved him and he learned a lot and stuff and it, kicks, it really inspired me to do another one. So I'm gonna 
be more regular with these. Get back to at least as regular as I was, and I mean it this time. I took all those 18 650s you guys have seen me charging and testing over the last couple months, built an electric bike, as did Alex over here. Uh, I built an electric bike, it's a beach cruiser. I built mine kind of lowrider with chrome and stuff like that. Currently has a busted rim, but I will show you guys that shortly. It's really cool, it only does about 17 miles an hour. But then we have Alex over here, who also built an electric bike that does, I don't know, something like 300 miles an hour or something ridiculous. It's I don't know. 40 kilometers an hour for legal reasons. Just change yeah. the units. Okay, so hypothetically, what would be the fastest your bike could go? I would say 42 miles an hour is what I've hit. I don't know if, you know. Maybe. The, hypothetically, that's the what you've hit. Mine's only, mine was originally 250. I bumped it up to about 500 watts. It's a front hub, so it can't handle too much, and it's geared. His, on the other hand. Just, just add a zero, 2,500 to 3,000. His, he bought a, wasn't it a 1,500 watt controller? And then yeah. you, we, we both did shunt mods on our controllers. He, but his was already 1,500 watts. When I was on it, because I, I weigh more yeah, than you. Yeah, you had 3,000 It hit 3,000 it. watts out of his controller. His bike, if you're not on it and you hit the throttle, it'll wheelie on its own. Like, it's got ridiculous torque. Keep in mind, he's doing 42 miles an hour, which started out on an old Huffy frame with almost no brakes to it. Well, no, yeah. it started, he built an electric scooter that took one of the yeah, little... The, the death scooter, yeah. Yes, he took a little electric razor scooter that do about 12 miles an hour and had it doing almost 30. And I kept telling him, hey, this is you're going to kill yourself on this. And he's like, nah, we're going to keep beefing it up until he almost killed himself on it. And then he parked it, and that's pretty much been it. And John, also over here, who's building something to electrocute himself with, also built a bike. Uh, his is more mild, but definitely more powerful than mine. But he's not trying to break the sound barrier with his. This is like a legit 1,000 watts. Yeah, his, his works like it should. It's, it's, not, it's not gonna break down on you, you're not gonna catch on fire, unlike yeah. Alex's might do. Just wanted to update everyone on what's been going on with me, with Spokane Create. Um, I've still got some product videos I wanna do. I've got a entire box of Arduino components that I am going to do some fun stuff with on here, and then I'm actually gonna donate all of it to Spokane Create. So yeah, I will definitely be more regular with these videos, which might as well be my catchphrase now, because I'd say it pretty much at the end of every video. But uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.